my name's Kathy Millett and this week we're adding the vegetation to our halo diorama. So here we are tramping through the halo jungle again and you can see that there's a real variety of vegetation from small plants on the ground all the way up to plants running up trees and eventually as you run up the trees there's ferns and creepers and all sorts through them as well. And the, the colour tones are quite muted, they're generally quite yellowy greens, and, but there's a lot of variety. So we're going to try and capture some of that in this diorama. So what are we going to use for our jungle vegetation? Well, I've looked at a lot of things and rejected some. So the rejects include plastic ferns, yeah, these were Amazon. I just, I've tried, I can't get them to look good. Other rejects include some of the doll's house stuff because it's got a very large, coarse um, sort of weave to it, which just looks like a plant made from woven material. Um, and I bought some moulds. I couldn't for the life of me work out how to get something thin enough to get these to work so that they match the paper of the others. Yes, I can get a nice thick or even a medium thin imprint out of them and they're lovely moulds but I just I can't get it to work thin enough so I'm sure loads of people come back and say oh it's really easy and if you do brilliant put it in the comments below and the final thing I looked at was a paper punch reject because frankly I just did it with a brother scan and cut instead what I did look at was I've got my brother scan and cut computer cut plants from previous weeks and there's two videos on those if you want to go and check them out if you haven't got those and you're doing smaller scales you can get one to 35 scale and below ferns and all of these plants more or less as laser cut and knock and um, some of the others do HO. They do nettles, they do ferns, they do a huge range in HO. So there's loads out there in the smaller scales. My problem is this is about one to nine, maybe even a little bit more. And I'm just finding it a little bit large and I'm struggling to get my head around it because this looks big, but actually in scale it's actually a little bit small. So there's a couple of things I managed to get from my railway modelling. This is HO, I think it's cantaloupes or pumpkins probably. And well, yes, um, they're great. They're going to be good. They're small leaved here, but they're going to look good on some of those. Um, I also managed to get um, some O scale. These are rhubarb plants. Um, yeah, um, again, small, but big in O scale. And then Doll's House. There was some good Doll's House stuff, it's just hard to find, um, I think, if you don't know what you're looking for, and it's not an area that I model in a lot. And you can get these lovely types of ferns on eBay or Amazon or something, and I'm sure there are loads of Doll's House supplies out there that's got some great sort of laser cut and etch and stuff that you can use. And I'm just going to go round and arrange some of these various different sorts. These ones need gathering into plants. And I've shown how I do that in great detail on the Brother Scan and Cut um, the second of the two videos. So I'm going to make these into plants and then I'm going to paint them a little bit because they just, and, and some of these, because they just look a little bit flat and one dimensional at the moment. So it's going to be a bit of brush painting and then we'll apply them onto here. So first up, let's make these into some plants. So these are incredibly easy to make. All you need to do is hold them in a natural bunch a few at a time, if you try and do too many, it just gets away with you. Put on a dab of super glue and then put on some zapper, which Rocket Blaster by Deluxe Materials is what I use, and it sets the super glue almost instantly. And there you have ready made plants. So, next up is painting, and it's just to give a bit of variety to put something down the center of the leaves or to put something on the edges so they just don't look so dead and flat. And I've got a lot of paint spread across the desk here. So I've got a variety of colours. I've got intermediate green, I've got olive green, I've got golden olive, which are very jungly colours to me. I've got a little bit of pale yellow to mix in, a little bit of red to go along the edges. So it's easy enough. You can just, oops, this red isn't very well mixed, um, but you can just come along and, it's not actually going to do that much. Um, just add something to the edges to bring out a different colour. In this instance, maybe a little bit of a, a reddish tone. I've got to say my red, I shook and I shook and I shook and it hasn't really come out, has it? Um, 
just so that it's not just a dead flat. There we go. And if you want, you can just mix it in with a bit of green so it's not as obvious. And perhaps just go along the edges with a, a slightly brighter green or something, just to give a little bit of variety. If you don't like it, you can always come back out and just mix it all in a bit. So have a little bit of play. Use these as your colour palette to just put a bit of variety into your leaves because these leaves are going to be, they're quite large. There's a lot of them. We want them to sort of stand out and look interesting. So I'm just making sure there's just a little bit more to them. Okay, so I've spent a little bit of time blobbing paint on and I really don't like painting leaves like this. It's a little bit difficult to get them to look good. What I do like though is taking something like a pen and using that to do the lines and veins on leaves. And these pens, oops, that's the thick end, these pens are just random pens that I've had and it's very easy to take something like a fern and just run this up the middle and get a nice sort of central stem and I find it much easier if I'm honest than using a um, brush or anything else because these are a lot finer. Okay so now it's time to put all of our plants onto here and for glue I'm just going to use business card. Um, I've got thousands of these because you have to order them and a little bit of Tacky glue, which is over here. Now, tacky glue is just a thicker white glue. Um, and it may be in some instances we have to go to something a bit stronger. But here we go. Cocktail stick. And just a nice big blob along the bottom, really. Not that big a blob along my hand, though. So I mostly use the white glue. Occasionally I got out the um, super glue and zapper for more on the ferns, which are sort of not sticking onto very much on the vertical side. Though I did try and push them into things so they had a little bit of protection from being knocked. When it came to the snipping the ends on wire, brother scan and cut type vegetation and pushing that into the ground, um, I did just tend to use super glue, but in, often I would drill a hole and, and put it in because it just adds a little bit more robustness and if you're not careful they just pop back off again when you're doing other things. Okay last thing to do is just a little bit of bedding in on some of these edges. So I'm going to get my knock leaves, I'm going to get a little teaspoon and I'm just going to sprinkle a few around some of the gaps just to um, hide a few of these bits where they come in. So now it's just a case of gluing them. And for that, I use the good old trusty um, isopropyl and alcohol and water, 99% um, isopropyl alcohol, because that's what I have. And I fill it third isopropyl alcohol, the rest is water. And you can just drip it on and it will set all these things in place a little bit. And then just follow it up with a little bit of white glue, dilute white glue, about a third white glue, two thirds water drip that on and occasionally um, it will spill out and you just need to mop it up with a little bit of tissue. So here we are finished. I'm just going to wait for the um, glue to dry on this um, leaf coat and just see if I, I like it or not and whether I want some of these bits to look a little bit browner because they're looking a little bit green but it's just finishing touches and we already did that when we did the ground section. So yeah, very pleased. Here we go. Finished diorama. Next up, I need to take some photos.
course, when there's only four of you in the house all day on your own, apart from when you're at home, it does get a little bit boring. There's only so many times you can go and play hunt the spider or fly on the fly or, you know, dodge the wasp. Or even, let's go to the park, because I might taste forever. Or, let's go play in the garden, because it's like raining. So we're just bored, bored, just get a bit boring. Yeah, bored, I'm bored. What am I supposed to do all day? I mean, I'm like bored. She's gone forever. And of course, because I'm end scale, time takes longer for me. Everybody else, it goes at a normal speed. But for me, I'm so literally, it takes longer. Really bored now. Bored, bored, bored. I'm bored. <laughs> Mini, big Kathy's at work. End scale's playing with her cars. She's obsessed. Do you watch Fast and Furious again? Everything about the cars now. Wow, 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 wow. With sound effects. Oh. Milko Kathy's off chatting to Sam. I think she's got a crush on him. And what am I doing? Well, where's those girls? Oh, she's doing an action movie. Yeah. She's on her own. She's just scouting locations. Yep. Everybody's in a bad mood. They're all bored. We played with everybody. We've climbed everywhere, we've explored everywhere, we've been everywhere we can. You know, and there's a limit to how far you can go when you've got feet our size and you want to get back and not let big scale Cathy know you've been out and about when you shouldn't be. She thinks we're just, yeah.